fact, I'm here to give a study this morning, and the study will be the split and the decision. The river of life, that spiritual wisdom, will flow. He that believeth on me, as in the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That will be the four rivers flowing out of the Garden of Eden. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with water, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain shall come forth out of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. Shittim mean, meaning that acacia tree, which is known for its strength, its resistance, it was used for the poles of the ark that was that held the ark up as they traveled throughout the wilderness. That being um, prophetically um, Judah that will lift up that ark, that altar of the Lord on this earth, his righteous judgment. That will be God's elect when they come forth. And we're going to start our study in Genesis 2, um, verse 11. Uh, starting with verse uh, 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and it became into four heads. And the name of the first is Pison, that is, that is it which compassed the whole land of Havilah, and there is gold. The name of the first river of, of life is Pison, means to break apart, scatter, uh, free-flowing, we are to leave, come out of Babylon. And I'm going to go and read in Revelation 18, um, verses 1 through um, 5. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. And then I'm going to go over to um, Genesis 11, verse 1, and I'm going to read of that foundation of, of Babylon that will uh, come about uh, prophetically. Uh, Genesis uh, 11, verse 1, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And I'm going to just hold, hold your place. I'm just going to flip over to Acts uh, 2, um, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. They are in one mindset, uh, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It will be the Spirit that will give you that utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jerusalem being a condition of truth prophetically. Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Jews as in being those that will be of Judah. For you, brethren, have become the followers of the churches of God, which are in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. Um, devout men out of every nation under heaven. They are under heaven as in celestially of the spirit. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitudes came together and they were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. The multitudes being the people's multitudes, nations, and tongues that will serve the beast system. Uh, they are the resistors of the Holy Spirit. When they heard that noise abroad, the, the God's um, true Judah coming forth in righteousness, they came um, to, uh, to resist it. And they were confounded because they are of Babel, Babylon, because that every man heard them speak in his own language of Babel. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, as in the one in, in, in the many-membered body, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans, that be in the language of Judah. There will be the speech of of the language of Judah, and then there will be the language of the of Babylon. And back to Genesis 11, 1. And the whole earth was of one language, of one of Babylon, and of one of 
speech of the Galileans had been of Judah. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, <coughs> east being um, where the camp of Judah um, camped, um, that they found a, all, everyone will go into uh, the captivity under Babylon, but God's children will be born out of Zerubbabel being of Babel, coming into truth that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and they had slime, had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city. We are to come out of the city and a tower. That tower as in a pyramidal in shape. It also means a rostrum, which is a platform raised above the surrounding level to give prominence to a person that's on it, whose top may reach into heaven. Uh, they're building their own salvation, being that man savior, those walls that the man savior has set up to save you. And let us make us a name as a mark, a memorial of an individuality or character, lest we scat be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see that city and the tower which the children of men builded, these being the six day men, um, what they builded uh, to build their own salvation. And the Lord said, Behold, the, the people is one, and they have all one language, that being the language of Babylon. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Those that are of Babel will not be, under, be able to understand those that are of Judah and the, of the Galileans, and those that are of the Galileans will not be able to understand those that are of Babel. Uh, so the Lord scattered them abroad upon the, from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city, and therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. And then I'm going back to Genesis to uh, 11 and it compassed the whole land of Havilah where um, there is gold uh, compassed um, as uh, to be as to um, circled as in celestially uh, the whole land of Havilah. Havilah denotes a whirling uh, or dancing motion uh, also to be strong and mighty also a dream as to proclaim information that will lead you to a greater oneness among the hearers, a declaration, a brotherhood, uh, a tent, also a tent village. Uh, we will all be one uh, in Judah, that be in Christ Jesus. Be, uh, and the Lord, um, for you, brethren, to become the followers of the churches of God, which are in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. Uh, this being the first declaration of the flowing rivers of waters of truth that will flow when the spiritual man comes forth. There is, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place, um, the tabernacles of the Most High, and um, the dream that will unite us with him. That being when you will be sleeping and you will be woken up by like the sound of like church bells. They will ring twice as a double witness. The bells were on the bottom of the high priest robe. This is your high priest Melchizedek coming to visit you. You will then see a vision of a man sleeping with breath being blown on him. This will be the quickening, making you spiritually alive where you'll be able to spiritually see and spiritually hear. When you see this vision of this man sleeping with breath being blown on him, this will let you know that you have been anointed in the Levitical priesthood under the high priest Melchizedek. It is Jesus Christ himself who will anoint his priesthood of the end days, he being that cardio knower. He knows man's true intentions. And then um, verse 12, And the gold of that land is good. There is Delium and the onyx stone. Um, this gold is good. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that he may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. And the Lord answered the angel that talked with me with good words and with comfortable words. These words will be spoken by his peculiar treasures that have been purged as to make free, cleanse, purified, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. 
God will anoint his priesthood himself. He being that cardio knower, he knows who is his. Um, Delium um, is, a, is a gum resin um, from the trees of Babylon, Ethiopia, India, and Africa. They were used for perfume, medicine, and incense in place of the costly uh, resins such as the frankincense and myrrh. The tree is black in color, resembling the olive tree. Its fruits look like wild figs. Uh, also, the appearance of manna is described like a coriander seed and its appearance like that of delium. Uh, it's kind of a, a pearl um, produced from the tree's secretion. When it congeals into the gum, it is considered a transparent pearl. This pearl is produced by plant life, not animal life. The tree of life, a river of water of, uh, and um, at the flow of this river is gold pearl from the plant life and the onyx stone. Paul tells us um, he laid the unique foundation, which is Jesus Christ. But now we must be careful how we build upon this foundation. We have to build upon this foundation with gold and silver and precious stones to build up the church, that being spiritually up that celestial ladder. New Jerusalem is built with three portions of divine revelation, three materials. Adam was made by God of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. We must have that breath to be awakened uh, to partake of the tree of life. Then the river of life will flow within us and transform us into the materials for God's temple, transforming us from the dust to the man of gold of his hidden treasure, not the earthly gold. Uh, the Godhead of his Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Gold, the Father, Delium, the Son, and the pearls, um, um, the, the produce of the Son, that, that were produced of the Son, that tree that is found in Babylon, that will come forth as that um, gum, transparent pearl. And then that onyx stone, precious stone. Uh, that being the spirit. The onyx stone is the middle uh, stone in the fourth and the last row of the high priest breastplate derived from the Hebrew name uh, Shohem as an Israelite. Israel meaning he will rule as God, leaving um, Jacob, your fleshly father, and going to Israel. Um, and then I'm going to go over and I'm going to read Daniel. Hold your place. I'll come back there, but um, I'm going to go to Daniel um, chapter 1, verse uh, 1. And the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nechemeneser, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Um, that prophetically being will all go into Babylon, but God's children will be born out of Zerubbabel, um, part of the vessels of the house of gold, um, of, of God being the silver and the gold. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his Enochs, and he shall bring should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. These being of Shohem, the Israelites, and of the king's seed. There are two types of the people. Shohem, the onyx stone, the stone that will have the names of the children of Israel uh, um, engraved on it. And we're going to read of that in Exodus 28, verses 8 through 12. And the I'm just going to start with nine. And I shall take two onyx stones, engrave on them the names of the children of Israel, six of their names on one stone, and on the other six names of the rest on the other stone, according to their birth. While the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, shall thy engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. Uh, thy shall make them to be set in ounces of gold, and thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial unto the ch children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two uh, shoulders uh, for a memorial. And then four of Daniel 1. And children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science and such had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. 
and whom they might teach the learning in the tongue of the Chaldeans. Um, blemish as in spot, uh, stain physically or morally, uh, that being um, the king's seed of the leopard beast. Um, they have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are perverse and a crooked generation. They stand. They do not bow to the image of, of Baal. They are God's holy priesthood, handpicked for his indwelling to bring forth righteous judgment. And that being the king's seed. Um, and then... Um, in the last row in the holy uh, high in the high priest breastplate, they will um, that will come forth last. Um, Twelve thousand from each tribe of Israel, the hundred and forty-four thousand, the nation of Israel as a whole. The gemstones that will be in her crown, those twelve stars, those precious stones that will shine as gold as um, at their appointed time. And as these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And among them was was found none like uh, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah that stood before the king. Daniel, meaning God is judge, representative of the tribe of Judah, that old lion that will be roused up for the end days, that onyx stone with the names uh, engraved on it, as in Israel, show him, Israelites. Uh, Hananiah, meaning Yah is gracious, favor, that being that grace period of the Elijah ministry uh, that um, prepares the way for the arrival of that old lion of the spirit. And we're going to read of, um, that in Revelation 19, starting with verse 11. And I saw heaven open, that being the supernatural realm opening up, for that border being lifted between the spiritual realm and um, the earthly, that firmament. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies that were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords. Uh, turning the hearts to the Father spiritually or to the fleshly Father to prepare the way for the arrival of his spirit. Jesus said to the woman at the well, she being that first one to recognize him in the vessel of Jesus and took him to be her spiritual um, husband, says in chapter 4, um, verses 23 and 24. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. He's seeking those out that understand that he's a spirit and he must enter into a vessel, he being the Lord of hosts. Um, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And Mishael meaning who is uh, like the mighty one. There will be only one Lord on the Lord's day and his name is one. For the Lord shall be king uh, on, over all the earth. Um, in that day there shall be one Lord in his name one. And Azariah meaning Yah has helped to enclose as in that bosom. Emmanuel God with us. And there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples uh, we will all be one in Jesus, whom Jesus loved. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. And then I'm going to go back to Genesis 2, verse 13. And the name of the second river is Gihon, the same as that that compassed the whole land of Ethiopia. Gihon meaning gusher, to burst forth, as in rivers or a childbirth, also a valley. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain made low. Um, compasses as um, to encircle celestially Ethiopia, which cons uh, Ethiopia, Ethiopia consists of two um, elements. Um, the first uh, part means to light up, kindle, to shine, to sparkle, as in those stars that will be in her crown, having a keen, fiery sense um, to look very bright. And the second is ops. Uh, as an eye, optic, wide-eyed, open-minded, to comprehend, make certain of something, uh, a vision, visible uh, from knowledge. And then 14, and the name of the third river is Hittical, that is it which goeth towards the east of Assyria, and the fourth river is Euphrates. Uh, the third, being Hittical, derived from the name Tigris, meaning arrow, sharp-pointed, 
pointed, also swift. A river also, a swift river also to prick or sting or separate. There will be those that will have the sting of the locust, that prick of the gall, um, uh, serpent um, venom, and then there will be those that will separate, come out. Also means a date palm. Ancient, there were ancient seed, seeds found in an archaeologist's dig in the, in the ancient fortress of um, Masada. These seeds, being 2,000 years old, were discovered in 1960, and they were stored for over 40 years, 40 meaning probation. And when a doctor uh, determined to germinate the date palm seeds, and she was granted permission in 2004, and now a fully grown date palm dubbed Hannah. Hannah meaning graciousness, favor. Uh, she, uh, the mother who was willing to give up her child for the Lord's service. Uh, they are described as having um, a nutty flavor with a honey-like sweetness, as in manna. Um, the promise God made for a new home for the nation of Israel. Um, the palm tree, uh, the perfect supplier of food, of shelter, of medicine. Palm trees can be used for food, um, for juice, for minute, fermented for wine. The trunk um, for timber. Um, and the leaves for baskets and furniture, etc. The land of milk and honey. Um, the leaves that um, don't turn brown and fall off, and there will always be, always be that new uh, coming forth every month without fail, for they will be watered by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be for food and the leaves for medicine. The date palm leaves grow, um, they um, full. Um, to, pointing towards heaven they grow tall pointing towards heaven where there is the promise of that life eternal the symbolism of the uh, straight trunk of the palm tree is clear that humans uh, shall journey down journey up to the to the to the straight path that leads christians towards righteousness the straight trunk with a company of 20 foot leaves of green that um that unfolded like a botanical star burst, as in that morning star. And the sweet dates fed the ancient Jewish nomads who became the settlers of Israel. The onyx stone with the names engraved on them, the palm tree leaves that gave them the shade from that hot desert sands. The ancient date palm tree has been suggested to be the oldest uh, fruit-bearing tree on the earth. They were planted near an oasis as a source of water and shade and food. They were reverenced as symbols of fertility, of peace, and victory. Joshua, Joshua meaning Yeshua, Savior, prophetically will be our high priest Melchizedek, who now sits on the right hand of God on the throne in heaven till he comes to make his enemies his footstool. And I'm just going to read of uh, Zechariah in Zechariah 4. Um, well, actually, Zechariah 3. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments, and he stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood um, before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head, and they clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by, and the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus say the Lord of hosts, If thy will walk in my ways, and if thy will, if thy will keep my charge, then thy shall also judge my house and shall keep my courts. And I will give thee places to walk among those, these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Uh, Joshua stood at the crumbled walls of the city of Jericho. Jericho meaning city of palms. Jericho, one of the oldest cities, just as in that date palm. God gave Jericho in, into their hands, and all the inhabitants and the spoil were to be destroyed. Only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron were used to, uh, to be put in the treasury. 
uh, in the house of Jerusalem. The children of Jericho were also among the captives who returned under Zerubbabel. The city was celebrated for the palm trees which adorned the, the plain around. It was also visited by our Lord um, on his last journey uh, to Jerusalem, and there is where he gave sight to the two blind men. And he also brought salvation to the house of Zacchaeus, the publican. God's children will take back their inheritance. They are the palm trees that they will stand uh, for the Lord that have been spiritually dormant, but will rise up as those palm trees awaken. Those ancient seeds of the date palm uh, were also called Methuselah. Methuselah meaning to die or kill also describes a plant's offshoots or branches, a kind of a weapon uh, out streaming or um, sending a discharge. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and calmly for them that are escaped of Israel. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planet. Um, the work of my hands that I may be glorified. The Euph Euphrates means fruitful one, noble one. Also means to split and divide, expand, multiply, uh, to um, break uh, forth and, and divide in, in two, uh, to bear fruit. The wise king ordered that the people, I mean, the wise king ordered that the baby be split in two. Uh, one half of the baby goes to each mother. And we're going to read of that in 1 uh, Kings uh, 3, 16. And then... And then came there two women they were har that were harlots unto the king and stood um, before uh, him uh, that were harlots. Um, there's the true harlot of Revelation 17 and the woman that was claimed to be a harlot, uh, that, um, that being a false Judah, those that say that they are Jews, Judah, and are the synagogue of Satan, that um, she was of John 8. They are standing before the wise king prophetically. That will be when that old lion will be roused up. He um, that brings that ruling scepter, um, the tribe that has that right to, to rule, the right to judge, because they will be one in Christ Jesus. And only God, God has that right to judge because he is the cardio knower. He knows the heart. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are, are you unworthy to judge the smallest of matters? And the one woman said, Oh my Lord, I and this woman shall in this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. Uh, and the one woman, that being that a woman that is that that will be one in Christ, um, that is that they called a harlot, but she's a righteous woman. I and this woman, as in that harlot woman. We will um, go into Babylon. Uh, she will be that woman that will bring forth that man child. And I'm going to read of her in Revelation 12, um, verses um, 1 and 2. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun as in righteousness. But unto you that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And the moon that be in the lesser light under her feet, her feet be in the footstool. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars that be in the God's perfect governmental foundation in righteousness, the nation of Israel as a whole. Twelve thousand from each tribe of Israel be in the hundred and forty-four thousand. And she being with a child cried, traveling in birth and pain to be delivered. She's about ready to bring forth that man child, that being of Revelation 19 verses 11. Um, and um, in verse 5, and she brought forth a man child who is to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And then um, back to 1 Kings uh, 3 verse uh, 18. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also, and we were together there, and was no stranger with us in the house, save two uh, in the house. Uh, two women bringing forth righteous and the perverse, um, and um, that being um, 
that um, government that will come to resist this righteous government and that being of revelation 12 3 and there appeared another wonder in heaven behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head he's coming to resist this righteous um, government and perverseness and then 19 and this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it died in the night night is when the holy spirit will be withdrawn it will only be in those that will have that have taken of the marriage um inlaid as to cover over as with gold how aren't this head of gold um, mammon wealth personified it being of the perverse spirit um that will be when yahweh will come into the vessel he chooses to speak through and satan will also come into the vessel he chooses to speak through to resist the holy spirit with his perverse spirit and she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thy handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom midnight is when the bridegroom is to come for the marriage the spirit uh, uh, um, as in that man child is to come that being when we will be sleeping and will be woken up by the sound of like church bells satan will re resist this union coming together um, by placing that dead child in the bosom as to enclose becoming one with instead of that living child and when i arose in the morning to give um, my child suck behold it was dead but when i considered it in the morning behold it was not my son which i did bear uh, morning star rising i jesus have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches i'm the root and the offspring of david and the bright and the morning star uh, that the sun being the builder of the fi family there are two types of people those of that harlot woman that will whore after the beast and those that will be of true judah of that morning star the angel of the morning uh, she said she considered it in the morning and behold it was not my son which i did bear you have to discern the spirits and the other woman said nay but the living is my son and the dead is thy son and this said no but the dead is thy son and the living is my son thus they spake before um, the king there will be those that will trust in man's laws to save the six-day man that is coming to its end uh, that being um the six the six day man's labor and work will be finished it will all flesh will have come through the earth at this time it will be now time for that seventh day man to come through uh, and uh, satan will come to resist it because he has power over the flesh that is why he wants you to stay in the flesh and there will be those who will look to save their soul um that's they'll they understand that that spiritual man is to come forth um that seventh dimension of time and then said the king the one says this is my son that liveth and thy son is the dead and the other says nay but thy son is the dead and my son is the living uh, nay but thy son is the dead and my son's the living that that will be the test of the faith uh, she being that one and the king said bring me a sword and they brought a sword before the king the sword prophetically will be the sword of the lord it is double-edged it can cut you down uh, with truth or or it can build you up with it it um it will bring forth righteous judgment and the king said divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other the child is to be one we are not to be divided in mind we are to choose one or the other um son being the builder of the family there would be the two seed lines coming forth and elijah came unto all the people and said how long you shall you be, be be between two opinions if the lord be god then you follow him but if he be baal then you follow him and the people answered him not a word then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king for her bowels yearned upon her son and she said oh my lord give her the living child and no wise slay it but the other said let it be neither mine nor thine but divide it the living child was unto the king her bowels as in loins we are to have our loins girt about with truth righteous judgment give her the living child she will receive the sword of the lord in truth being cut down by it no wise slay it we are not to divide it it being of the holy spirit in truth it is not to be divided but spoken exactly how it's written what the Lord has spoken, we are to, um, to uh, not sugarcoat it. You can be cut down by it, 
or you can be built up by it, it being said uh, three times, as in the Holy Spirit. Uh, 27, and then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother um, thereof. She is the mother of that living child. She understands that the word is not to be watered down, but spoken. Uh, Revelation 22, verses 18 through 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God shall take away him out his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are writ, written in um, this book. And then verse 28, And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. Um, the wisdom of God was in him, that, being, that will be Yahweh within us, to do judgment. Um, he being that old lot, uh, lion roused up. And then I'm going to finish it in on uh, John uh, chapter 8, verse 1. And Jesus went into the Mount of Olives, um, prophetically, that being the anointed ones, the olive groves. And early in the morning, he came again into, into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and he taught them. This being, um, that uh, being um, prophetically the morning star, when you're fed spiritual truth um, by that uh, spiritual angel that comes in, on, in the morning, come unto him as did they, um, as did they came to Solomon. Uh, and he sat down and he taught them. He taught them on their level, um, not rising over them, but but um, simply as in um, as in friends. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they set her in the midst, they set her, this adulterous woman, in the midst. Jesus is supposed to be in our midst, not an adulterous woman. And they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act, act as in theft. The thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and they might have life more abundantly. Uh, life, not death. Now Moses and the law commanded us that su uh, such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Commanded us. Only God has the right to judge, not man. On the Lord's day, when the old lion is roused up from its sleeping slumber, uh, only true Judah will have that right. Because anyone who claims that they are Jews, Judah, and are the synagogue of Satan will be exposed for the fakes that they are. He's coming to clean house. And this they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger he wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. They are trying to accuse the finger of God. And he wrote on the ground because they are of the ground. He is exposing them for the fakes that they are. Uh, the seed line of Lucifer. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did us weaken the nations? So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and he said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. When they continued, he lifted himself up. He's raising himself up uh, as a lion, being roused up as that rightful judge. He that is without sin among you, God's elect will have the laws written in their hearts. They will be one in Christ Jesus. Let him cast the first stone. That They will have the right to judge because they have him in their hearts, and he is the rightful judge. And again he stooped down and he wrote on the ground, uh, this being that second witness, and, and they which heard it, that being it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. They heard it, that being that inner man, it being what that one woman did not want to divide, it being of the Holy Spirit, that was in that bodily form of the dove. And John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit des um, descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon uh, him. And I'm going to read back again in 1 Kings uh, 3, um, verses 20. I'm going to read that again. 1 Kings 3, 
uh, 26. Then spake the woman whose, uh, whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, Oh, my Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it, uh, in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was, was in him to do judgment. Wisdom of God was in him to do judgment, that being him, Yahweh, that is within. And uh, Jesus is, and then we're going to go back to uh, John 8. Um, and that was verse nine and they, and they, which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. Jesus is not to be left alone. We are to have Jesus in our vessels and the woman standing in the midst. Everyone left, but this one woman, she is standing in verse three. They had set her. Now she's standing while everyone is bowing the knee uh, to the image of Baal. God's children will be standing. And when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he says unto her, Woman, where are thy, thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? Uh, prophetically, when the old lion is roused up from his sleeping slumber, having that rod, that right to rule, and she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. No man, she understands he is that rightful judge. She is standing with him, as did that, that one woman. She stood for his righteous judgment. Neither do I condemn thee. He being that old lion, being roused up. Sin no more. Stay in the spirit. Do not go back to the flesh and stand for truth. And we're going to end this today. Alec, you have a great day until the morning.